So I am able to hear clearly now. And able to see the video clearly. Screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So. So today's session is first. We have to complete the tools for genome assembly. It's just a review. I've already given the tools there. So today we'll be explaining in detail here. Okay. So tools for genome assembly. So to with two days, as in uh, the previous session, we have learned about fragmented map assembly, and in the previous that previous session, we have learned about genome assembly. Now to do both of them, genome assembly and fragmented map assembly, we require tools, and those tools are listed here. And what are the tools which I use here? We are going to learn about those tools. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, it's a brief introduction. Then object of the session contains are and tools for genome assembly and brief summary. Okay. So what is that for sure? So we know that DNA sequencing reactions generate uh, sequence reads from DNA clones. That is what we have learned from genome assembly. I mean uh, genome sequencing strategies, and then. We need to assemble these uh, genome sequencing uh, clones reads into a large uh, genome, which is of high resolution. Okay, high resolution map of the genome. While doing this, I said that uh, assembling the genome is just like a jigsaw puzzle. You might have seen yesterday with the fragmented map assembly, and everything is just like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so if we carefully look into that, we can easily assemble them. But if you don't carefully look into that, then we can't assemble. That is what is there. So jigsaw puzzles can be solved, but we have to carefully look out where are the clues with us and how we can join those piece of information and get a complete image. So piece of information is nothing but clones here and image is nothing but the genome here. So we are assembling these clones into a complete genome. Okay. And for this, we require a computationally very intensive uh, dealing with that, that at the whole, uh, whole genome level, and we have seen how it is done in the previous two sessions. Okay, and we have already seen what are the steps in genome assembly. First is uh, the assembly of these reads, which are 500 base pairs, into context by identifying the overlapping reasons. Okay, by identifying the overlapping reasons, then assemble them, combine them, and join them into large fragments, which are known as context. So reads are assembled into context, which are of 5,000 to 10,000 base pairs. Uh, okay, so 500 bases are converted to 5,000 to 10,000. So nearly 10 reads are taken and they're assembled approximately into 5,000 base pairs. Or if you see, we can take 20 reads and we can assemble them into uh, 10,000 base pairs, that is uh, a context. Okay. So we have made a larger piece now. And this larger piece, again, we identify the overlapping reasons and then make merge them and make scaffolds or super context. Indirectly, they are known as chromosomes, unidirectional chromosomes. Okay. So by doing this, we get a higher resolution map of the genome. That is what we know. And we also see the orientation that is from the five prime to three prime or three prime to five prime, whatever we generated. Okay. And this is what we have seen previously. So these are the reads which are in different orientations. We have assembled them into contexts, and these contexts are assembled them into scaffolds. That is what all we learned previously in genome assembly. So now, with this brief uh, introduction, we are going to see what are the tools which are available for genome assembly. Okay, I said that there is a first tool which is very important to us. That is calling the base from the chromatogram. I've shown you already how a chromatogram exists. Okay, and how we can call that base from the chromatogram. So calling here means look at the chromatogram and get the base. So there is a particular color which is given to each chromatogram. Then we take that color, that is A is represented by one color, P is represented by one color, C is represented by one color, and G is represented by one color. So we take all these uh, chromatogram with the fluorescent traces. Then we try to predict the Basis from them. Okay. So, how do we do it? We look at the uh, chromatogram curve and then we look at the property score. 
So each and every chromatogram curve will give you a probability score, and based on the probability score, we try to see whether it is true or not. Okay. For this, we have a tool which is known as Fred, which is used for base calling in reefs. Okay, Fred for base calling in reefs, and this Fred is actually used for base calling. Okay. So this actually first step what it does is it derives the base. and second step it looks at the quality of the base being at that step okay and this actually is for uh, follows a method which is known as fourier analysis okay fourier analysis is a statistical uh, model which is based on probability and that which is uh, based on simulation okay so fourier analysis will is used here by this fred to call a base and to assign a score and to look whether the trace is accurate or not okay so this is what is done for base calling in reefs using fred so what is that we look as we look at the 1% of chance error which is accepted okay and higher the score is the quality of the reefs and if the score value falls below the threshold then human intervention is required so when the score value is good it's not a problem when the score value is less below the threshold then we go for manual intervention that means we manually look at the curve and assign the base okay so this is about base calling using fred so this is the first tool which is required to analyze whatever reads we got after analyzing the reads then using these steps then we go for assembly of the reads into context and the tool which is used for assembly of the reads into context is nothing but frap and frap is just a unique uh, program for a sequence assembly okay it takes all the files which are there previously so fred is actually a base calling program so when fred gives a quality base calling uh, file that base call file is read by this frap okay and then it tries to take that files as input quality files as input and align them so whatever i said it tries to find the overlapping reason then it makes a joining that it tries to merge all these things are done by smith waterman algorithm which you have learned previously okay smith waterman algorithm so frap will assemble all the files which are there in the reads the good quality files into context so the base quality information is taken into account during alignment okay so after the alignment the pro the program performs a assembly first then it merges okay and then it removes the unoverlap reasons so whatever we have seen in the sequence assembly i mean uh, fragmented map assembly problem yesterday that is actually followed here so first it tries to pair them where are these overlapping reasons once the overlapping reasons are paired then the one which is actually not pairing that will be removed from the list then a context is prepared from that okay so the next one concept so whatever data is there with frap is taken into consideration okay and that it is used for finishing the genome concept is actually a tool for finishing genome that is complete genome assembly okay so concept is actually used for two uh, three ways first to view the data second is to edit the data third one is to finish assembly okay these are the three uh, aspects which are done by concept viewing editing and finishing okay view edit and finish so all these aspects are covered using this concept okay so what does concept do concept takes the data from i mean frap which is the assembly okay and recently concept has improved a little bit by using the data from newbler another program which is actually here okay so 
trap and nuclear data is used as an input to finish the genome assembly. Now, what are they? So, the process of finishing can be, in principle, can be divided into three stages. That is what which is there. Okay. So, first is viewing the assembly data for the purpose of deciding where additional data are required. So, wherever there is a problem in the reads, previously whatever is identified while assembling the content, first it looks at that data. If the data is not in proper order or is there an error, then what happens is that clone will be sequenced again and then it will be used here. Okay. So, the first thing is viewing the assembly and data for the purpose of deciding whether or where additional data or editing are required. So, that's, that's the first step. Second step is obtaining additional data. So, once we identify where the data is required, then we go back to the lab, we look at the clone, what is required, and then resequence that clone and get the data. So, that is known as obtaining additional data. And then editing to correct, error, correct errors in assembly or cancel sequence. Now, take that data, which is again resequenced, and insert there wherever it is required, and then assemble them. Okay, using the same principle, finding out the overlapping reasons, identifying the consensus, and then merging or joining the overlapping reasons. All these are the steps which are there in assembly. Okay, so with these three steps, your genome can be completely assembled and cancer is actually available at this location. Okay, so this is about cancer. So mainly most of the people who are there now, they use these three tools, which are Unix based programs. This is freely available and it's being improved a lot till date. Okay, Fred, FRAP and cancer. Fred is used for base calling, FRAP is used for read assembly into context, and CONCERT is used for finishing the genome, that is assembling the context into genome. Okay, so these are the three tools which are commonly used. But there are some other tools which are also available to us, and they are TIGR assemble, assembler. So TIGR stands for the Institute of Genomic Research. Okay, so the Institute of Genomic Research at this moment it is known as Craig Venter Institute. Okay, Craig Venter's Institute. So, what does this institute do is it tries to sequence the genome and assemble that and leave it online. That's all. Maybe in the uh, NCPI or in EMBL or in NIG, where anywhere it can just deposit. The data and leave it and it's the job of the other bioinformaticians to down download the data wherever it's available and make it sense whatever the data is there so make sense of the data which is available online okay and tigr has developed an assemble for them so because they only sequence and assemble and they deposit the data online not more than that okay so if any one of us we are having a problem in uh, doing sequencing, we can just write that this genome is, uh, uh, this organism is very important. And if you can sequence this genome, it would be very important. So they'll take consideration of a request. And if they find it is very important, then they'll sequence the genome free of cost for us. Okay. And we can carry out the rest of the analysis from there uh, after the assembly. Okay. So TSGR assembly is also a Unix based program like the previous one. It, it takes the data from the shotgun genome sequence fragments. Then it takes the input, clean reads, okay, without consideration of the sequence quality. Then the main thing is as shown, forward and reverse constraint, which I shown previously, they are taken into consideration to remove misassembly. I've already shown what is forward and reverse constraint. Okay, and there is another tool which is known as Arvacan. Okay, 
and there is another tool which is known as Avaqa, and this is also also Unix based program, and this actually completes the full genome assembly. Like you need not go to Fred, Fraf, and consult three different tools. This will do complete genome assembly. Okay, this is the program of assembly of whole genome short countries. So what does it do? Is it takes the reads, it assemble them, it converts them. it looks at the reverse and forward constraints it converts the sequence errors and then it gives you a quality of the score so it accepts base scores with associated quality scores as sent by fred as input and produces scaffolds of fully assembled genome so if you want a fully assembled genome without going through all the three tools you can use araka okay or we can go to fred a uh, clean i mean make a clean uh base call reads and then use it instead of fred uh, frap and cancel so you'll do two steps or you can do all the three steps here okay this tool is for whole genome assembly completely another one is also there as i said euler as i said euler is there just follow sir traveling salesman problem or dynamic program which you have learned previously in semester in computational biology okay it tries to identify the shortest path that means it tries to identify which one is the most overlapping sequence with the other one and then once it identifies then it tries to merge them okay euler is also used for whole genome assembly okay so in short we have learned that these are the steps in genome assembly so dna sequence generates short raw sequences from dna clones which are known as reads and these reads of various orientations are joined to form larger fragments after removing overlaps and these longer merged sequences are known as contexts okay and then a number of overlapping contexts can be further merged to form scaffolds or super contexts okay and that gives you the oriented unidirectional chromosome okay and the tools used for genome assembly are fred for base calling in reads trap for assembly of reads into context concept for finishing the genome and the tools used for genome assembly other whole genome assembly are digr assembler arvaken and euler okay so these are the other tools so this is what we have learned with tools for genome assembly okay So I'll be done online.